Well, there's a couple of things. One is uh, first to invest heavily in education uh, to really continue the innovation uh, online and in, in the in digital technologies and digital media. You know, we need gifted, talented, and creative people. Um, and uh, the U.S. is falling way behind in developing uh, the, the talent it's going to take to continue innovating on a network. So that's one thing. The other thing is that. Uh, um, as much as possible, um, Congress and the FCC and everyone should preserve network neutrality to let an open ecosystem development of services and to avoid consolidating power vertically. Uh, we're, we're really, essentially, the network, network operators are, are, are moving up into the service area and constricting the ability to uh, provide an open, um, new creative entrepreneurial uh, network services. Well, there's dual fears. Um, one, on, on, on one side, there's um, the kind of uh, intrusive regulation uh, that our, our national security agencies and the Chinese government are, are injecting into our open network, um, the very pervasive surveillance uh, at all levels uh, from both those polar forces. So that's one. And then on the other hand, um, the continued growth of uh, digital crime and malware on the network are always irritating. Well, I really um, am looking forward to um, a world where digital data is layered across the physical world so that every object, every place, every, everything will have all of its information and associated media available in place as we move through the world. Um, the static internet um, has done wonders for uh, providing a, a library to humanity. It's now, now time to build a digital atlas for humanity mm -hmm. so that it, wherever we are we can have detailed information about that place and, and then later on that can be used as a platform to build new proactive contextual computing. Well in about 10 years we're going to have massive computing resources available to everyone. The shortage of computing cycles is, is going to diminish. It's not only an improvement in micro scale computing but the emergence of nanoscale computing uh, biological computing uh, and the, the development of something that I call a medic computer. That's really network computers like the SETI at home screensaver or the Google Grid. Uh, it's also called cluster com computing, grid computing, where all the computing on the network is harnessed to single tasks. All of this computing power is going to require a new kind of computer programming, uh, parallel, concurrent, multi threaded programming. And we don't have the skills, and I think it's going to take us about 10 years to master the programming and development skills to utilize the enormous computing power that we're going to have available. In my field, I mean, I really think about pervasive information available with mobile device, but you know, I can't underestimate uh, the impact of, of nanomaterials. Programmable nanomaterials are also going to have a huge impact. What do you mean by programmable nanom nanomaterials? Um, molecules that can be operated under computer instruction, so that the not molecules can behave just like software elements, so you can program matter to assemble itself in different forms at a molecular level. Dramatic new materials uh, for every imaginable application. Uh, the, the, the integration of human intelligence with programmable matter could, could mean um, abundant power, uh, cheap solar power, eat clean, filtered drinking water, um, durable materials and, and uh, lighter materials, um, um, light scale infrastructure that can be deployed easily, uh, a renovation of our cities. So that's on the materials and science side. And it's, of course, very, very powerful medical application. Um, using molecular assembly, uh, custom pharmaceuticals can be made up on the spot. Treating illness. Oh, Lord. Bright. I need a pair of shades. It's going to be very interesting. We've got a great future ahead of us. Great.